Welcome back to the channel, lads and ladies, and welcome to the Demon Knight Doolahan. We'll call him DK. <laughs> anyway, DK is just about to exit the town of Dirk Dirkba. We just went to the arena, and when there is not a tournament happening in town, you can inquire as to where they are going on. And thus we make our way to our next waypoint, considering chasing down these desert bandits to add to my growing army of, hmm, fancy ladies. So, this is, of course, the Wings of Glory mod for Mount and Blade, and I have greatly enjoyed some of the differences with that, to wit, most enemy raider bands, as you see us engaging here, will have three refugees as their prisoners, if nothing else. Here we are trying out some, I think they're called Yarids? They're like throwing clubs, uh, or blunt javelins. They have quite a bit of punch for a thrown weapon, but eh, they lack the accuracy and stopping power that I would prefer in a main weapon. However, let me introduce you to the reason they call me Demon Knight. The, what is this, heavy, heavy mace, something like that? It's a two-handed uh, club and it is extremely powerful, capable of blowing through enemy defenses and dealing significant damage. I did talk about this a little bit in the last video, didn't I? Anyway. We're having a grand old time taking down some desert bandits. And if I haven't mentioned it yet, I'll go ahead and say it now. There are a wide range of enemy types or unit types in the game, all of which are recruitable by one means or another. And they all, well, they're either bandits or they stem from the volunteers you can recruit in villages and then you train them up here we go taking on another band taking on some more ladies and the reason i mentioned the the peasant women or refugees uh, they're just your standard ladies in the game and they upgrade to the same units so they're part of the same unit tree is that they end up being quite balanced and mobile, very effective and versatile characters. Uh, not the best in Siege Warfare, which is something we'll see coming up here, but very effective in the open field as you see here. Camp Defenders being the second upgrade, Fighter Woman being the first, and can we see any... I don't think we have... What are they called? Spear Sisters or something like that? Anyway, um, their final upgrade is a mounted unit. In fact, at their first upgrade, uh, they become a mounted archer, which makes them quite effective. Unfortunately, we lost one, a fighter woman. Those are not the most difficult thing to replace, but I'd rather grow in numbers than lose them especially these filthy unwashed bandits. Anyway, at this point, the Demon Knight Dullahan is nothing but the leader of a mercenary band, but soon he's going to choose a lord to follow. He's already built renown by these battles out in the wilds, taking down bandits. I've also wiped out a few bandit hideouts for local lords, and I've done a lot of fighting in tournaments. And here is a tournament in the Eastern style. So you get into this uh, Mideast type area. I think this is the Ottomans in the Wings of Glory mod, which is a little bit different in terms of how they name things than Vanilla Mountain Blade. It actually makes it a lot easier for me to understand who these guys are supposed to be, uh, because these look a whole lot like some Ottomans to me. 
anyway, winning a tournament is not automatic even against the Ottomans, and it can be quite challenging in this setting because there are four or five weapons that you could be randomly spawned with as you see here and these team fights can be very challenging you see it's just getting run down by those enemy horsemen uh, but luckily they're on what's called practice horses which doesn't give them a ton <laughs> as we go full uh psycho shoujo on that guy and just chop 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 until there's nothing left of the blue team <laughs> when an enemy horseman falls off their horse as you see there the horse being knocked down they have to do a getting up animation and there are no invincible frames in this game so if you fall down you better hope you can get up quickly and if you do one of those chop attacks you can take down the enemy fairly easily you can see us betting a thousand denarii on ourselves and uh, that is a lot more than you can bet on the tournaments in vanilla mountain blade and that's just another one of those features that makes the grind in this mod to the game a lot easier and a lot more enjoyable having said that this eastern style tournament is especially challenging at times because you could get sword and shield which is pretty reliable you could get great sword which is my favorite or you could get the javelins as your weapon and I'm not a fan of trying to do team battles with nothing but javelins and a horse <laughs> it's uh it's oh sorry javelins and a shield and a horse it's it's not the best anyway we are managing to cut through the competition fairly well here and once we get away from the team battles things are a little bit more predictable uh, here you see us in checking yes it is indeed a one-on-one -on -one, and you'll see that things are quite a bit easier for us Doolahan stats are pretty ridiculous at this point in the game again I've been leveling up quickly I've been putting some time into this game, and Wings of Glory is faster paced than the ordinary game. Which I have found to be still quite enjoyable, because uh, leveling up an individual character, building your wealth, uh, these are not the reasons that I play the game. I'm interested in getting through the story of my character, and the Demon Knight Doolahan is certainly building a legend for himself and at this point we have joined up with our king we have been chosen to be recruited as a noble we've been given a village as our fife and now you see our army has grown quite a bit <laughs> to wit <laughs> these hungry lads are eating lots of food as we join all of these other allied lords to siege the city of nara we're trying to take this major city from the kurgits i think is what they're called uh they're basically a uh, mongol type unit and almost all of their units are mounted many of them mounted archers most of them not heavily armored which well when you're fighting a bunch of nords that's not going to work out so well for you by the way did i mention that we joined the nords yes we are indeed a nord lord with a horde of ladies <laughs> we also have some i think they're called teutons who are basically your German since the game, uh, and they have some fantastic mounted cavalry, as well as decent other units all around, because they tend to have fairly well armored units. Not something I haven't touched on very much in this game. Armor is one of those things that seems quite essential in larger battles being mobile and agile is all well and good in a duel or in a one-on you know maybe five or six situation 
but get anything more than that, especially start throwing incoming projectiles into the mix, and you'll be wishing you had the heaviest armor possible quite quickly. That's another reason that we're staying as a mounted character in this one. It is difficult to win large battles without your horse, and that's what we're going to have to do. As we've joined the siege on this city, and we're going to see massive numbers of enemy units that we have to face. Here we are joining the Huskarls in the charge on the city. All the AI choosing the ladder on the left, and myself joining them near, right behind Jarl Iria. Alrighty then. Our shield blocking incoming enemy arrows, scoping out the situation as we try and find a path to get to where we need to be. This is a massive uh, castle siege. Uh, you can see that there's stairs over on that side, and I'm hoping that I can get on to the second wall snaking along this one. But I don't know if I'll be able to do that. I had to pause real quick there just to uh, <laughs> to deal with some some uh, kid things. So, well, actually no, I think what I did is I actually alt-tabbed and shut off the uh, spiffing Brit. That's what I did. I, I did a lot of dealing with the girls today too. And it was, oh my gosh, they're getting so cute. They're starting to play together and Big Sis is just super excited about the baby. I mean, she has been in the past, but woo, there we go. We'll call that a speed strat as we <laughs> space hop over <laughs> that uh, that ally's body. There is The game doesn't really know how to deal with you jumping on top of someone, and you get sort of weird Mario Kart effects because of that. <laughs> Uh, but here we are with our spear trying to, uh, well, give the point to the enemy here. It doesn't look like he should be able to reach me with that saber he has, but he definitely can. As we switch to a much more effective weapon, you see here, we just whack a all the ever-living crud out of that flank of the enemy team. And there are plenty, plenty more enemies where that came from. Uh, the way that uh, can we crowd surf our way down to the action here? <laughs> Will we get pushed off the side? Uh, I, I suppose we'll see now, won't we? <laughs> As allied weapons start clipping into our, our fourth wall here. <sighs> Excuse me. It's rather late in the in the night. And I feel like recording this video, and here we go, whack them all again. As long as they're not looking at us, it's sure easy to take them down. And that's the deal with a team fight. You see that when you're flanking, or when you're holding the line, there's definitely a lot of different things you can do to aid your team. And it never hurts to be able to just smack people on the dome with this massive, massive... A blunt object that breaks right through their guard. Uh, so we are just getting KO after KO. The, the Demon Knight Doolahan here, not killing anyone actually, as even though this would smash skulls in real life, uh, you are merely wounding enemy units whenever you take them down with blunt damage. Any other kind of damage, and they'll die. But Blunt damage can allow you to wound enemies instead of killing them, giving you a chance to do things like take them prisoner. And to the cheering of my Nord allies, uh, the Nord horde with which we poured through the enemy defenses, we have achieved victory at 10 casualties to our own team, 6 deaths, and most of those not my own troops, so that's nice, and a massive, massive number of losses to the enemy faction. There are enemies today. Maybe one day we'll be friends. I feel like I'm persuading people one by one to change the way they see the world. <laughs> anyway, this has been the Demon Knight Doolahan in my first city siege. This time with a lot of allies to support me, and yet it kind of makes me think I might be able to do this on my own sometime.
I'll have to give that a shot. <sighs> Excuse me. I am a bit sleepy. It's time for me to go to bed. Anyway guys, as we finish off the last defenders of this enemy bastion and claim for the Nords, this city of Nara, it's not going to go to us, by the way. The king doesn't love us that much, or... Yeah, he is the king. There's Jarls and one king in the Nord faction. We are going to get a castle at some point. Maybe that'll be my next video. Catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.